Uh, so I'm going to talk to you. In 2013, I was here and I talked about the effect of releasing Kraken, or really JavaScript, on the uh, PayPal community. And this was what PayPal was like in 2011. Basically, to create an application and get it live, it was on average, which says something, 180 days. There were four to six week cycles for pushing code, very long cycles for experimentation, and really, really heavy centralized framework teams. I'm sure some of you have experienced those kind of framework teams. They're very ugly, right? Um, yeah, it was pretty sad. The story I told in 2013 was how I came from Netflix. I was there for four years. You know, we, uh, and they are, able to move very fast. Uh, I came there with my eyes wide open, knowing what I was getting into, which says I'm a little bit crazy. But I came to hope, hopefully kind of change the front end technologies there. And so uh, uh, what we did was we internally, we started a project called Kraken. And uh, the best stuff that we could, we brought out of the Kraken internal project, which was bring Node.js live at PayPal, uh, was the, is the Kraken.js framework. So if you see Kraken.js, uh, that work actually came out of the internal project. Now what you see here, though, is the happy Kraken. See his little cute face, you know? That was designed by our design team. But the original Kraken was much angrier, right? And here's the updated Kraken. Um, because this Kraken is pissed off, right? You know, the other Kraken, happy Kraken, pissed off Kraken. The reason this Kraken was pissed off is because the technology stack and the web developers and all the front end engineers were absolutely stuck in the mire of people from the back end who were trying to dictate to them and trying to figure out how to, how to create a framework in which you wouldn't need them anymore, right? Um, so we, we turned that on its head, and the angry Kraken was pushed out the old thinking as we brought JavaScript to the fore on the, you know, as app layer, and now in some of our services layer, as well as, obviously, you know, the browser technologies. So here's a few things that the effect of bringing Kraken, bringing open source, bringing JavaScript did to the PayPal culture. Uh, the first one is easing the creation of applications. You know, it used to take 180 days, get an app, new app created, and get it put it in production. There were a lot of other things happening in other parts of the organization to get to cloud technology, using OpenStack. A whole bunch of things started happening at the same time. So when I was here in 2013, we actually had no, we had zero Node apps live in production at that time because uh, at that moment, when I gave the talk in April or May of 2013, we were working on our first one. We had pushed it, you know, as an employee beta. It was rewriting the consumer experience. And this is the old consumer experience. I think this experience, I don't think, changed for like 10 years. It, it looks like it was uh, out of a museum, a web museum. Uh, I'm happy to report that, well, then what happened was in, H in H2, the second half of 2013, we got that live and a much cleaner looking application, Node app that scaled really well. And within six to nine months, we went worldwide with it in, you know, uh, hundreds of countries. So that was pretty quick. But now we have 67 apps live, Node apps live in production. So you see how much faster things are moving with JavaScript. Um, and we also, along the way, trained hundreds and hundreds of developers in JavaScript. It's kind of nice having Doug Crocker there. Uh, Doug is our great effective JavaScript three-day workshop. We also put together with Dan Shaw and the team from uh, Node, Node Source now, it used to be Node Firm. We put together a real custom three-day uh, Node workshops you know, for engineers. But literally hundreds and hundreds of engineers we had to train in JavaScript and node and you know it actually was the good thing was we didn't have to force this on people right uh, this was the sort of thing that once you once you do things the right way in an open source manner and you don't try to take the technologies out there and morph it or paypalize it or any other company company you know make it their own but keep it so that when engineers come in they can actually google your framework right 
because you're using as much open source technology as possible, which accelerates everything. What you want is you want your developers to work on the framework during the day and be choosing it to work on their side projects for the next startup, right? And that was kind of a goal as we did this. Versus the frameworks we had before took 21 to 30 day training classes to learn. These, you know, people came in, they were familiar with it. The first day they were checking in code. Just the difference of that. The second effect that Kraken uh, had on PayPal was the velocity of pushing code uh, live to site. Um, this was, again, 2011, uh, another great PayPal uh, uh, UI from the Museum of the Past. Uh, I'm speaking facetiously here. Um, in 2011, just to change a phrase, could take as long as six weeks to change. Uh, that's really hard when you, that's harsh when you want to change a word on the site. And in some cases, it could be two weeks. So let's give some credit here, okay? But in the, in the worst case, it's six weeks. And of course, if you missed your push window, then it was probably another four weeks. So now, you know, within the same, in 2013, when we gave the talk, we were in less than a minute, and that's only because that's when the, uh, you know, the webhooks ran for GitHub to check when we pushed code live. So you could push it almost instantaneously. Um, the, to change a header and footer, now this sounds simple, but when you have all these legacy products, and there's just, you know, over 15 years or whatever, a lot of legacy builds up, and you have all these experiences built in C++ and XML and some in Java, now we're moving to Node, some of the headers and footers, to make the changes, you had to, you had to push in the old technology stack, which took up to six weeks, right? So it could take sometimes up to two months to make changes to the header. And now we're two minutes. And there just simply, what we do is we register with these applications, a header widget and a footer widget. They can be pushed in and they can be built by another team. I mean, these are kind of common things. But you know, when you're coming into a, a large organization that's been very monolithic, a single CGI app running everything, a single release number for all of PayPal when I got there, uh, these things seem pretty obvious, but they're actually not easy to get to. But again, uh, you know, JavaScript being the enabling technology here. One of our more complicated apps, which actually looks the most simple, is our checkout application, one of the, one of the products that's in my team, uh, which is responsible for the majority of, or a good portion of the revenue at PayPal, our checkout flows. Um, used to, to, to push that code live, again, you were caught in that four to six week window. And just over a period of a few months, we pushed this particular application 300 times. And that's with a lot of A-B testing. We do a lot of uh, big data Hadoop stuff to analyze our results because um, just a few basis points can mean a lot of money. Uh, so you have to really be careful as you're doing that. The third thing that, and this was the real kicker for me when I came in. I didn't come in saying, hey, we're going to node, hey, we're going to use this or that. Because I knew there were a lot of technologies we could choose from. What I said was the most important thing was the UI layer is the experimentation layer. And I think a lot of companies, even startups, don't understand this clearly, that if you start thinking about your interface, your experience layer to your code as being the avenue to rapid experimentation and learning. This was the bread and butter at Netflix. You know, the way we were able to, you know, our experiences often at Netflix, we would, we called them Frankensteins because the home page would be different than the genre page for a while. But we kept learning and kept learning until eventually, you know, recently uh, they won an Emmy. The Frankenstein turned into an Emmy, which I think is pretty cool. You know, this train on the left is what happens when it takes you a long time to release product. Your, your product managers are trying to pile features on the train, right? That's the features going on the train right there. But if you can get it to where you can really depart all the time, then you're much more casual about what you put on and you're willing to experiment and try different things. We had a prototyping stack that was absolutely horrendous, you know, for being able to do any kind of test and learn and fail fast and learn fast. And it was all proprietary Java-centric frameworks and very heavy server-side Java components that drove everything. Fortunately, we got rid of all that. 
we brought Node.js in for prototyping back then. And we went from things like that to this. And uh, just recently, we rewrote this whole checkout application just over the holidays, which is, again, you know, our most complex app from a, all the hundreds and thousands of contingencies and being in so many countries. And we wrote it in Jang AngularJS and actually got a performance boost, and it uh, paid for itself in the development. But we're not stuck on Angular. We're not stuck on Dust.js. We've experimented with Ember. We're doing a lot with React now. Uh, one of my teams is starting to work on React Native. And we'll continue to move on. But the theme is we've chosen JavaScript to be the centerpiece of how we're doing our technologies. And it's helping us drive forward. And finally, to democratize the code. And I've probably just put one slide here for this one and I heart GitHub, because we brought in GitHub internally, and that really helped us to break the monolith that, that had happened with these uh, centralized framework teams and make it to where anybody could contribute code and, uh, and make a difference, which is fantastic. So it's, it's, you know, it's not perfect. We got a hell of a long way still to go at PayPal, as I'm sure you do in your organizations, but you know, it's a lot simpler to create apps. Code velocity is higher, experimentation has been enabled, and frameworks and product code has been democratized. And what's exciting is that open source and JavaScript are the key things that made that happen. So thanks a whole bunch.